Welcome to BWI Live. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. This is the premier insider edition of Penn State Recruiting Information. We have the experts who have been grinding all weekend, despite the holiday, to get you what you need to know about Penn State Recruiting. Are they about to go on a run? Both of these guys have said that separately. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion about that uh, during the show today, but plenty of of stuff to get to plenty of information this is a great time before i introduce them uh and i love just the sitting on screen while i filibuster here subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com right now get the insider information if you would like the video help this uh spread penn state football uh recruiting information to you and your friends like the video subscribe here on youtube as well ryan snyder and sean fitz with me uh ryan we'll start with you how was the easter weekend how many uh easter baskets did you have to put out and uh what was in them one from us one from grandma one from the other grandma i think we're at four i think there was four total so uh two uh easter egg hunts I don't know, about seven peanut butter eggs later. Um, I, my kids finally went to bed about 1030 last night. So, yeah, it was great. Fitz, are, are you in a sugar coma, too? Do you steal from the kid's basket? Yes, I do. Un, unabashedly, I do. It's <laughs> part of being a dad. Um, I'm not proud of it, but like I'm not going to deny it either. Uh, so we've got some Quentin Martin conversation to get to Ryan and I had an extended conversation on Friday when he committed, but Fitz, I want to come back to you quickly, uh, just to get your thoughts on Quentin Martin, uh, joining the Nittany Lions on Friday, a big enough topic. We can discuss it twice in four days because, uh, Martin, a huge prospect for 2024. Yeah, he's been on the radar forever. Uh, he's been up a number of times. I know Ryan was all over this one, um, but it's a it's a big commitment for Penn State. Any way you shake it, any way that you project it, I know you know running back, linebacker, receiver, slot guy. You know what, whatever you say, he's one of the best athletes in the nation. He's one of the best guys that fits that slash role in the country. So I think there's a lot to, to like about Quentin Martin. I do think he ends up at running back. I know that's his preference, um, but I think he's also a guy that you can do so many things with. Um, somebody on our board brought up Debo Samuel. It's kind of how I've seen him the whole time. It's like a guy that can play receiver six, one and a half, one eighty five. So he's kind of got a receiver build, but you can also run him like a running back plays between the tackles and, and does a really good job with that. It's going to be a big leap uh, no matter what which position he ends up at, but uh, he's, he's a guy that I think you can take and you can plug in a few different places and fill holes when you need to. I mean, you look at the reality of the situation when he gets to campus as a true freshman, Nick Singleton and Katron Allen are still going to be here for, for another year. So that's a tough way to break into it. So what can you do with him to get him the football, um, to use his athletic ability? And he, he's just, you know, he's, he's the best athlete every, every field he steps on. How does that translate to the, to the next level? But, Either way, I mean, he's a guy that you absolutely are doing backflips about taking right now. Another marquee member of Penn State's class of 2024 um, and a guy that keeps this uh, this spring uh, momentum going for the Nittany Lions. So do you think he is an offensive player? I guess that's another question, too, is there's been conversations. I know when every other time we've talked about him, it's like maybe defense, maybe linebacker. But do you think it is for sure offense the way you spoke of him? It seems like a heavy lean that way. I, that's basically what I'm thinking based on my conversations with people on this side. Like, I think he'd be a fantastic linebacker. Like, that's where I keep going with him is he's got all these traits that you love um, in a in an outside linebacker, an impact in outside linebacker. He can run. He's got size. You know, he's he's going to continue to – or we're, we, as in Ryan and I, going to continue to have that conversation because he does project so well. And that said, I'll go back to this old story. I tell it all the time. Keenan Allen's coach told me that he would be a top will linebacker. Like, and obviously, you know, other things have worked out for Keenan. Thank goodness. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he can do it on the offensive side. And that's, that's, that's what it comes down to is yes, I think he can play offense and defense at this level. Like that's, that's the kind of athlete he is. I know the preference is offense, and I think Penn State, you know, to, to get him on board has leaned heavily into that, and that's why I say that he's going to be an offensive player at the next level. You see these highlights that are putting up there is you can motion him from, you know, wide. You can motion him from the slot. You yep. can do all kinds of things, put him all over the field, and he has an impact there. College, he's not just going to be running away from guys like he is in Western Pennsylvania, but there's a lot to like there in terms of what he can do. Uh, just a very diverse skill set. I don't know if there's anything – 
like crazy elite, like he has one elite trait. He's not a four, three guy. You know, he's not a guy that's just going to like be stronger than everybody. He's not Saquon. Um, but he just does so many things really well that it's tough to take him from that, from that habitat of, of an offensive player and, and move him over to defense. But I get yeah. why, like, I, I, I have no arguments about that. Like every time you watch him, you say this guy could, potentially be a difference maker on the de- defensive side as well so so i get why but i think just basically i think he wants to play offense in college i think penn state's going to give him that opportunity to, to do so I, I made kind of a i wouldn't say a big deal but I, I did point out that i think his running style um is not the the easiest to translate it there's no there's nothing that says that it can't translate being really upright those big long strides um, is that anything that that is a concern to you when you watch him if he does play running back and and uh, Ryan, if you want to jump in here, kind of give your thoughts again on on what you think about Martin after uh, Fitz. Uh, what do you think about the just general translatability of his his mm-hmm. style of play? I, I think he'll be fine. Like I, I think there's a lot of things that he does that he does out of necessity because he plays both ways. You know, it's it's very hard to play every play of the of of the game, offense and defense, and then come out and keep your technique on point, keep everything like that on point. You know, we've seen guys that have run straight up before been very successful. Like uh, we've seen guys that have needed to learn things. So remember last year when we're this, at this time, we we're talking about Nick Singleton needing to learn in, to run inside. And we saw, you know, the first couple of weeks of the season, you know, they hammered that home. They tried to get him better at running inside. And by the end of the year, he had done a really nice job of, of learning how to cut things back and go back up in, in inside his blocks and develop. He's developing into an all around great running back because of it. I think Quentin Martin's kind of the same way as so you can teach a lot of the stuff that we are going to nitpick about this. And I think he can, yeah. he can be a really good back. I still think Penn state has room for another back in this class and, and the way that things have gone with getting carries and that translating to the transfer portal and all these things that come together in one great haven of college football, like you're going to need more backs. And I think that Martin is, is a guy that can you know, play running back. You can put him in a, you can kind of use him all over the place and it's going to depend how he grows too. Yes. One and a half, 185 right now is, you know, is a pretty good build for, for receiver or running back for even outside linebacker. I know people are going to say he's too light for an outside linebacker, but he's not like he's, it's just a matter of that frame and how much he can hold. I mean, Tony Rojas was the same size, albeit maybe an inch taller um, at this time last year. So there's there's a lot to uh, lot to nitpick here, but I think it's stuff that he can address in from a strength pr- uh, program perspective, from a coaching perspective. There's just a lot to like about this kid's game, and I think that that can round itself out, sort of fine tune itself there, um, and and be a guy that you can use all over the field. Uh, I'll, Ryan, anything I'll hop in, you defect, thought? Defect, let me hop in yeah, real yeah. quick. One thing I would yeah. just add there is. Um, yeah, if you guys read, I'm sure many of you guys who watch us, they read, you know, obviously our commitment stories are always free. Uh, I did ask Quentin about this. Uh, just I'll read the quote exactly. He said they're they're recruiting me 100% as a running back. Uh, but I also have no doubt that once I get up there and start practicing, they're going to move me around uh, and be diverse with me. They're going to give me a little bit on defense. They're going to give me a little bit on offense. And, and I'm hoping that happens, but I'm okay with what happens either way. You know, I'm just all for doing uh, whatever I need to do to help the team and get on the field. So, uh, plus 10 for the quote, right? The, uh, yeah. the old, I'm, I'm all for doing whatever I got to do. That's great. I think fans love to read that. And then also it's the other thing I'd say is he's going to be an early enrollee. He's going to be here in January and he's going to be working out next spring. So uh, one year from now, man, we're going to be talking all about, uh, did you guys see Quentin Martin out there uh, running yeah. with the linebackers? And then, uh, you know, the next practice, we'll probably see him out there with Nick, Nick Singleton and, and Katron. So I'm sure they will, they'll mix and match and, uh, you know, the cards will fall where they'll fall. If it's uh, if we're not talking about Quentin Martin doing the Tony, if we're comparing him to Tony Rojas and we're talking about how he gains 25 pounds during the spring uh, semester next year, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, another thing that I that I want to bring up with you guys, and I'll come back to you, Ryan. You've got one of your most important commitments happening Friday night. Coincidentally, the same day that you have a top player in the nation at defensive end. Your top two of your top three quarterbacks uh, in the class of 2024 on campus, um, and of course some other really important prospects. Ryan, I know you wrote all about how just star-studded this group was, and then suddenly uh, Quentin Martin commits on Friday night. It, how orchestrated, or is it a happy coincidence that these happen? Because it it does feel like, hey guys, look at this piece of the puzzle that's right. that's landed for Penn State while you're here. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, they do do that. What do you think? But I don't think that's in this situation. That's not really how it <laughs> fell. I mean, he just uh, obviously he visits last Monday. Uh, you know, family's talking. Uh, do you want to go Florida State? Do you want to go visit Ohio State? None of those visits are really appealing. I think Ohio State getting James Peoples probably had a little bit to do with that. Uh, of course, that happened a few days prior. Uh, but really, he just committed Thursday night. You know, it, it, the thing I would say about Quentin is. You know, when I got to know him very early, man, uh, you can tell just interviewing him and stuff, great personality. And then when you get to that end of recruitment, guys, you do those interviews, and the guys say like five words and they just want to get off the phone and they're exhausted. Uh, you could really I could really see that the last couple of months with Quentin, uh, especially interviewing after this most recent visit um, two Mondays ago. Uh, yeah, you could tell he was just worn out. So really, it, it was he calls him up Thursday night, just makes a commitment, and and you know that's how it ends up playing out. But it certainly does not hurt uh, to have big news like that. You know, adding one of your most important players the same day that you have uh, you know Nick Marsh and, and Dylan Stewart and a bunch of other quality players on campus. Fitz, you have any thoughts? Yeah, if they were going to line it up for that, I would say blue white game would be the the ideal. Like wait another week and until you have a, a ton of guys on campus. They've done that before and it, and it's worked out well for them. So, I would say that that's like coincidence, a happy coincidence, you could say that. I wouldn't even I, be shocked if it happens again this upcoming Saturday. I'll leave it at that. I mean, there's just enough. I'm not saying that there's a commitment coming, but like there in there are a lot of guys that they're in the mix with that will be here this upcoming weekend. Just throw that out there. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a little bit in the show. I want to like I want to save that part of the conversation uh, for a little bit later. Michael jumps in the chat here. He says, "Great pickup this weekend. Looking forward to the stadium on Saturday." Yeah, blue white game coming up this weekend. We'll obviously be covering that on our Wednesday show for sure. We'll talk a little bit about it here. But I've uh, been catching you all mainly on rewatch. Want to drop in with a bit of gratitude. Thanks for the content, gentlemen. Michael, awesome to have you. Thanks for being Thanks, here, Mark. and thank you for uh, the donation to the channel. The tip jar is open, so if you want to uh, send a donation in via super chat, we'll talk about your comments, your questions. If you just want to say thanks like michael always appreciated uh but we'll be talking to you throughout the show so if you want to uh drop your questions your thoughts in the chat and uh we'll be talking to you as we go throughout the next roughly 40 minutes 35 minutes of the show uh right now though i want to get to something else that's very important and that is uh this week's sponsor and that is my perfect franchise are you looking for a way out to leave the corporate rat race for the American dream? Do you want to have some autonomy in your life? Do you want a side gig? Do you want to have a legacy? Uh, Andy Ledecky from MyPerfectFranchise.net is here to help you with that. I spoke to Andy about the uh, the process that he goes through of putting people in franchise uh, ownership. And I, I, I'll be honest, guys, I grilled him about this because this is like, what, what is this business like? Uh, how do you have to get in? He answered all the questions uh, in a way that passed the, the test, right? That passed kind of the, the eyeball test. He wants to help people find the right business for them to help make their lives better. He's going to work with you, talk with you, find out what your strengths and weaknesses are, find out what your financial situation is to make sure this is the right move for you. And then he'll recommend a business for you to get into to help enhance your life. Uh, and I like that about our sponsors here on the show, both on the Monday and Wednesday show. They are all about making your life better and enriching your experience. So My Perfect Franchise, Andy is ready to help you out. Check out My Perfect Franchise. Uh, .net. His services are 100% free. He's here to help if you have any questions about business ownership. Check out the Blue White Illustrated Message Board uh, for more information or Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net to get started today. Uh, guys, when uh, we talk about the weekend, uh, notable visitors are always important, um, and there's there's a lot of them, right? So I've tried to, here on the show, break it down by position a little bit, but we can bounce through the guys you want to speak to. Um, I guess the first place I'd like to start, though, if we could, is wide receiver. Because, Fitz, you talked to Nick Marsh earlier this week, and I just wanted to get some of your uh, reactions to his conversation and what he said about Penn State and where you think everything stands right now. Yeah, I think with Nick Marsh, an important guy for Penn State, because not only did he make it on campus, but this is what we talked about on Friday on our Friday show, for those of you who checked it out, Penn State needed to just 
get in there, get a foot in the door and, and set up an official visit. He's done that. He's going to come back in June. Um, so like it's a step-by-step -step recruitment right now with Nick Marsh is like, you've got an opportunity to, to break in there, to be one of those teams. I know Auburn's in there, Tennessee's in there. Um, you know, you've got some other uh, heavy hitters in there as well. Um, but this is an opportunity for Penn state to maybe I don't want to say go from scratch to being in the mix um, because they were, you know, seemingly in the mix when he committed to Michigan state in the first place. But like, this is a, uh, this, this is some serious strides for Nick Marsh. So I think Penn state put in a, a good effort this weekend. It's been a really uh, product. It was a really productive day on campus. He didn't even stay for, for practice the other night, but a productive day on campus for them to, get out there and, and just basically make a first impression. As I said in my article, he they, they exceeded expectations for him. I think he was expecting Penn State to be just another visit, and they they, they really impressed him. So now he's looking forward to an official visit in the summer, and that's really all you can ask at this point in time with, with Nick Marsh. Yeah, uh, getting official visits, I know, is a critical part of setting that up here in the spring to get him back for the, uh, the summer. Um, the, a couple guys, though, that we've talked about, they have committed now. And uh, I guess what's the what's the percentage chance that guys get to the official visits? Um, do you have any sense of like leanings? And, and he seemed pretty tight to the vest in, in terms of like where the pecking order was. Did he mention anything about a top three or four coming out anytime soon? No, he's just going to check out some other schools here. Uh, Auburn has made an impression, and I think he's going to go back there. And I think that's probably the team to circle right there uh, for Nick Marsh. So I, I think that uh, you know any anything you can do to chip away at that. And, and Ryan kind of said it last week. You've got Auburn, Tennessee, Michigan State. Those things, those three have have a little bit in common. So. We're going to see where, where it goes and which direction it's going to go. I, I think he's a guy that's more than content to wait it out. You know, he committed the first time and maybe he committed a little, a little bit too early. Um, but uh, he's, he seems content to wait it out and get to June and get to those visits. Uh, Ryan, you spoke with Jalen Hornsby, correct, mm -hmm. this weekend? Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Another another big receiver over six, uh, over six one. Um, what were your what was your conversation with him like? Yeah, just under we have him at six one and a half, two hundred, really just under six two. I should probably give him the six two. I'm being a little critical giving him the six one and a half, I'm being <laughs> honest. Um, you know, now that we have that at on three where I can mark the half, I, I use it all the time. But uh, you know, back in the rivals days, I probably would have said six two. But anyway, uh four star prospect, two eighty five in the on three hundred, certainly a player that uh is an absolute take for Penn State, someone they've been on for a long time. Uh I think the big takeaway, uh mom came up this weekend really hit it off with James. That was probably the biggest thing I took away from the talk. That was mom's first time coming up there. Uh, she said she was, he, he said that she was talking to James, didn't even know he was the head coach. They really started hitting it off. And then they go and do the meeting, you know, with James at the end of the day. And she was like, Oh wait, this is, this is the head coach, you know, that, that I've been talking to the whole time. So that, that went really well. Uh, I think the big thing moving forward, uh, he's taken a couple visits now here, uh, Texas A&M back in March uh, 25th, then went to Georgia March 30th. Uh, he has an official visit set for Rutgers June, I think it's the second weekend, so June 9th to the 11th, I want to say. Uh, and Penn State will get an official visit. Uh, it's not set at the moment, uh, but he made it pretty clear that Penn State, Texas A&M, Rutgers are the three right now that look the most likely for an official visit. Uh, two things with Georgia and A&M. Uh, a and M has Elijah Robinson, of course. Elijah's from the Philadelphia area, and then A and M has Fran Brown. Fran grew up in Camden, so there's there's two coaches there that have very close ties to his region. I, he said that even his parents actually know Fran uh, personally, like outside of um, you know just just the coaching relationship there. So of course Georgia's shooting, in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Georgia's Georgia's shooting incredibly high, uh, you know, when it comes to the wide receivers. So we'll see if if he moves up that board there a little bit, but. Um, Right now, I think Rutgers, I mean, Rutgers hosted them the most. Rutgers is definitely in the mix here for this one. Uh, but I think Penn State's going to have a really good shot as well. I mean, I, I I wouldn't come out and say that I think Penn State's a favorite after just our talk the other day. But I think it's absolutely, like, no, no doubt they're going to be top three. Probably, it's going to be Penn State and probably one other school, whether that's A&M or Rutgers, uh, that he ultimately decides between. I really like Hornsby watching his highlight film. This is my first chance to, to get a look at him. Uh, 340 in the industry rankings for on three. He's in the on 300 at 285. Probably an appropriate place, but maybe a little bit underrated. I, I think that, you know, you look at how fluid he is for a big guy being 6'2", 200, and his ability to go get the jump ball. I, another big receiver, Penn State. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm 
making up stories here, I think, when I'm a small versus uh, big receivers and, and the new receiver coach. But at the same time, um, Penn State is in and talking to some of these guys, and it does seem like a lot of their recruits, 6'1 or taller. Uh, Fitz, I'll come back to you. Just generally, how do you feel about the receiver board now that we're a couple months in and Penn State and Marcus Higgins are, are kind of getting into a rhythm here? How are you feeling about the, the targets they have and their relationships with those guys? Feeling okay. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything overwhelming that says that, you know, he's he's blown it out of the water or anything like that. But I also don't think there's anything that says that he's doing a poor job. Like, it, I think it's very much wait and see. You know, I was kind of asking some asking around about receiver board. And they're like, yeah, ask in another couple of weeks and we'll have a better idea of how that thing comes together. Because a lot of guys were on campus. So we have a couple other guys uh, back this weekend for the blue-white game. And then, you know, sort of settle that, resh reshuffle that board and get it ready for official visit season. And I'll also add that the best size wide receivers are the best wide receivers. It doesn't matter if they're five nine, six yeah. four. Like it's not a situation where you want to have one guy five nine, one guy six one, one guy six four. That's great. It's worked before, and I know it's worked before for Penn State. But like get the get the best players at the at, at any size you can get them, and hope they become the best players that you can that you can coach up. So I think that I think a lot of that is overrated in terms of complementary wide receivers. Yep. And I'll, I'll add in there, spring evaluation period, April 15th through the end of May. That's going to be Higgins' opportunity to get out and see a lot of guys in person since, of course, coming on to Penn State. Uh, yeah, obviously, Virginia, he was recruiting a good, a good handful of these guys, but uh, actually getting out uh, to different workouts and getting to look at guys, uh, that'll have a big impact on how this board goes. But, but just getting Nick March on campus is absolutely massive. I, I, that was a guy that you know, Sean, like we said on Friday, you know, we've talked about him so much and we know he's absolutely one of their top handful of receiver targets. I think that was a big, big visit there for Higgins. And it seems like he did really well. And I don't want to sleep on Tysir Denmark, too. I, I know we've talked about him here a little bit, but I don't think that recruitment's over. We'll see where things go. You got Chance Robinson down in Florida as well. Another really important player that I expect to take an official visit. So you know, there, patience, there's... patience is fine here. Like you yep. can you can be patient here. I know they want, I know everybody wants all the commits right now, but like get some time, shuffle that up and, and go from there. And it's going to happen in June. Cause that's when a lot, you know, a lot of receivers, there's a lot of receivers out there with offers, but you know, that's, that's when we really uh, filter down into, uh, into who's on top of the board and then, and do what you can to impress them on your official visits. Uh, we're going to go to the chat here for just a second, because while we're talking about receivers, once again, the Penn state secondary well represented Lamont Payne <laughs> oh, nice. in the chat Lamont uh, look out for my son going to be another uh, beast of Penn state Lamont a friend of the show uh his son that is this is Lamont Payne senior uh came on the show last winter um so far uh I think doing a pretty good job out there in spring practice for the Nittany Lions got a couple other people uh got a question here for from Mike regular here on the show given the recent commitment from Martin Here's the question. It's the update, guys. So this is the <laughs> updated question. Martin's on board. John Mitchell's on board. Top 10 class. Yes or no? Is there a path? Uh, Ryan, you love this question. So oh, I let's get go it all the time. You yeah, love and I question. always say the same thing. I mean, if you want to have a top 10 class, I think it's really important. You're going to need a five star or two. I mean, just if you look at Penn State's, especially for Penn State. I mean, I think every time they've had a top 10 class in the last 15 years, they've had at least one five star in that class. So I think that's important, but it's not the end all be all. You can do it if you are consistently landing top 150 talent. Penn State just got two top 100 players in Quentin Martin and John Mitchell. That's really important. Is the is the net wide enough though where I see five, six more top 150 guys? I don't I don't know if I'd go that far. So you know right now honestly my projection would be like exactly where they're at 12 which is kind of what we've right. seen so many years in that 12 11 you know 11 to 15 kind of range uh but it's certainly possible i mean there's there's you know there's there's a lot of things that that have to play out here over the next six seven eight months but uh right now it's going to be hard to do i think fits any thoughts uh, going to revolve around the lines, the offensive and defensive mm -hmm. lines. I know we talk about getting the big fish, getting the quarterback and getting, you know, you get Quentin Martin at running back, but I think it's a lot of that, your numbers are going to be tied up in rebuilding that or retooling that offense or excuse me, that defensive line. And then you're probably going to have what four or five offensive linemen as well. Um, so 
that that just goes to numbers. I mean, that's just math right there is like a, a chunk of your class is going to be on both lines and it's going to depend on how Phil Troutwine and how now Deion Barnes can can respond and, and get those guys in defensive line, um, you know, a little bit behind given the coaching change, which is to be expected, like no freaking out there, but like got to get those uh, those big fish on the defensive line, get them in for spring visits, get them in for official visits and then see what you can do, because that's going to be a big part of your class. Uh, another question here in the chat, or I guess a, a comment, but I'm going to pose it to you as a question. Alexander says, PSU needs to capitalize on getting these New Jersey kids to commit. I know that uh, it has been a focus and a renewed focus. So Fitz, how do you think it's going so far uh, for 2024? Because it seems like 2025, you know, kind of laying the groundwork a little bit earlier in that class. But how is it going, I guess, in both classes? And, and how do you feel about uh, the situation with New Jersey? Yeah, I was looking up the uh, on three dot com backslash college backslash Penn State Nittany Lions football twenty twenty five commits, and it's all <laughs> New Jersey. So that's where it's going. Um, they're doing a nice job in building the facility or building the, the groundwork for getting in there. I know I, I have a pick in for another twenty twenty five kid uh, in in Jersey, but I think that's where the framework of bringing Khalil Ahmad in, you know, really stretches out. But Jordan Thomas is big. You know, they've got some twenty twenty four guys. Jalen Hornsby was just on campus, um, so like the opportunity is there. The talent seems to better jive with what they're looking for in this class. Um, but I still think 2025 is where you see the the big results. And we've already seen that. It's been pretty remarkable that two kids are on board already. Um, you have potential for more in, in that class as well. I think they've hosted all of the top 10 in, in uh, 2025, and they're in good standing with a lot of those guys. So I think that's where you see it a little bit more. But yeah, you, I, I think they're, they're making headway in Jersey. They just had a lot to, to come back from haven't done well in those North Jersey parochial schools. We will see if the moves that they have made pay off in that area. Jim I'll B jump in with real us. Quick. Sure. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll get to this in a second. <laughs> I would just say for 2025, there's still a good chunk of guys out there too. You got Cam Miller, who's being coached by Bill Belton. I think that's going to be somebody they're going to be seriously in the mix with. You got Des Jones, um, who am I missing? Kamar Archie. We haven't talked about Kamar a lot, but he's he's a top you 100 good. player. Did, one last guy to mention, or one last thing to mention, 2024 wise in New Jersey. Uh, I think four players are, are the most realistic right now for Penn State. You got uh, Vabu Tori, I believe it is. I, I always butcher his name. I think, I hope it's Vabu. Um, safety prospect out of Irvington. You got Jalen McLean, Kaj Sanders as well. All three are safety prospects. I think they're pretty high on Penn State's board. Look for those guys. And then Jalen Hornsby, of course. I think those are the four most realistic guys. Nair Daniels, Jordan Thomas are in there. I need to see a little bit more before I would think that that's realistic uh, at the moment. But those three safeties in Hornsby, those are the ones I'm focused on for Penn State right now, 2024 wise. We got a great crowd, and uh, especially when they're very nice. Jim B here says, first time catching the show live. You guys do an awesome job. Appreciate that. And uh, Zen Zub says, ditto, first time catching live. Your, your coverage is outstanding. These guys do an amazing job, and uh, they it. deserve uh, quite a bit of credit. If you're here watching the show and you're enjoying it, like Jim B and Zen Zub, like the video. Always appreciate that. Helps us out. And uh, it helps us defeat the almighty al algorithm on YouTube. So uh, that is uh, greatly appreciated. Now, Fitz, you mentioned that the defensive line is going to be big for 2024 and how they get to a top class. So let's discuss some of the defensive line players that were on campus this weekend. We've mentioned Dylan Stewart. Pretty big um, guy to have on campus. Not, not just literally, because he's a big defensive end, but also... Number one player in the nation. Um, Chad Simmons over at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com and at On3 had an article about his visit to Penn State. Uh, what was your feedback that you guys heard uh, about Dylan Stewart and his time with the Nittany Lions? Fitz, I'll come to you. Yeah, Penn State knows they're playing from behind here. Like, it's uh, Georgia, Ohio State, uh, Alabama's in there as well. South Carolina's going to get an official. So, like, there's a lot going on in this recruitment, and I think that Penn State did some really nice things this weekend, made a really good impression. Um, it, it's about setting up the next step. Like, if you can get him to set up an official visit, that's a that's a – That'd be huge. I mean, to be honest with you, because of locations in your favor, you know, mom and dad, wh whatever. Um, so you've got an opportunity to get him back on campus in June. Will that happen? I don't know. He's got three officials set up. I believe I, I mentioned Ohio State, Georgia and South Carolina is the third one. Um, so you got two spots left and 
everybody's gunning for it. So like, this is not going to be an easy recruitment. I don't think anybody expected that, but uh, to get him to campus, to show him a lot of the good things and make him feel comfortable. I mean, it's not his first time on campus, so that's good. Uh, but that, I mean, all you can do is sit and wait and hope that uh, you're one of his uh, official visits. And when I say sit and wait, I mean, obviously put the effort in to try and be one of those guys uh, or one of those schools that uh, that does get him on campus. So uh, progress this weekend, but uh, still a long way to go with Mr. Stewart. Uh, Ryan, defensive line, let's uh, let's just kind of zoom out a little bit. Um, any other anybody else on campus this weekend that stood out to you that you think is an important player to talk about in uh, whether it's this class or next class? Well, Jalen Harvey, uh, who uh, we we thought was going to be there and Jalen was just kind of quiet on us this weekend. And then, of course, he, he did pop up. But uh, I don't know. What was that visit number? Seven, eight for Jalen now. He's been to Penn State um, more this year than you have. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's actually I've come accurate. back down to my home at Harrisburg. I don't leave it anymore. Um, yeah, there's a visit number eight for Jalen. So, uh, you know, still has those three uh, USC, Ohio State, uh, Notre Dame official visits set. We'll see where things go from there. But uh, obviously, we have those picks in for Jalen for a reason. You know, we, we feel like that's trending really well. So, uh, but I think he was the only other uh, top 2024 defensive lineman on board or, or on campus this weekend. I'm trying to look over the 2025 list. Oh, of course, Trent Wilson. I forgot. 20, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about him. Interested about Trent Wilson, uh, defensive tackle. So obviously very important, but not in this class, which doesn't fit perfectly. But that's obviously a huge need for the Nittany Lions. So how's the relationship there? I mean, certainly more visits than any other school right now, right? So that's a great thing. I uh, got to see Dion. He, he was spoke highly of getting to see Dion coach uh, for, for the first time. And, uh, of course, uh, with Dion being here as long as he has, you know, that that, that relationship, uh, it's just kind of continued. Um, you know, he, he also made it clear. Uh, he was talking to John Scott a good bit, talking to some recruiting assistants more. So I had that. That, and, of course, he's 2025, too. I want to make that clear. Obviously, he has to reach out to the staff now. Uh, staff can't really reach out to him until September. But, uh, you know, I, I think the relationship's good. I just think that this is going to be another one of those truly national recruitments. Uh, you already have a Georgia offer out there, Ohio State. Uh, he's visited uh, Ohio State. or he Actually, he just got an Ohio State offer. I think it was like March 25th on the visit and then boom, immediately schedules another visit to Ohio state for their spring game next week. So that says something there. Uh, and then of course, like I said, he's going to, he has all types of great offers. He's been to Georgia's already. He's already been to A&M. He's been to USC. He's been to Texas, been to LSU. I think that kind of all says something right there. So going to be a national recruitment and yeah. one of those ones that uh, I always see Penn state being, you know, in the mix for, for maybe an official visit, but certainly not going to be easy to land him. Just as a um, so you, so you're aware, uh, watching the show, Trent Wilson is the 24th overall player in 2025, according to the industry ranking. Uh, on three has him as a 93 defensive tackle uh, overall prospect, a four star, and uh, the eighth defensive lineman in the nation, number one player in Maryland for 2025. Uh, Fitz, uh, I, I was just uh, how athletic is he? You know, six three, two seventy five here in the database. Um, he seems like just from the film off, uh, I was, unfortunately I had his film ready to go and then something happened and it got corrupted. So I can't show it to you here on YouTube, but he seems like a, an incredibly athletic football player. Yeah, moves around. He can break into that St. Francis defensive line, which is uh, has a lot of talent. I, I I think there's still a lot to tap there. To be honest with you, like he's a, he's a good athlete. There's a lot, nice raw base there uh, with uh, with Trent Wilson. But yeah, there's a lot to like there. The size is legit. Um, great size. I mean, six three, two seventy five as a sophomore. You know, he's not overweight, anything like that. So I think that there's a lot to like there, but uh, still a lot to tap into for for Mr. Wilson. I think he can definitely get better, and he'll be probably one of the top defensive lineman prospects in the country. Got a lot going for him being at St. Francis with the vis visibility there. A lot of schools um, will be through and everybody's going to offer, end up offering because he's there. Um, but yeah, he's a guy that's going to get out. He's well-traveled as Ryan said. So it's going to be another, another national recruitment. So get him on campus as much as you can while he's uh, I don't want to say a secret, but while he's still, you know, sort of budding close to home. Uh, any other players? So really the, the receivers and defensive line, the areas that I had kind of separated of, I think, need and also importance uh, positionally. Other players that were on campus, other big names. Uh, we haven't really talked about Luke Cromenhoek. Uh, Ryan, do you want to take this one and kind of he keeps coming back, right? I mean, that's got to be a positive sign, even though it's still committed sure. to Florida State. For sure. Um, you know, I haven't spoken with Luke, so I can't say too much about this visit. You know, I, I, I did an interview with Luke, 
I don't know, it was back in January, I think it was. Uh, and he made it clear then that he was going to continue taking visits, and, and Florida State knows that. Uh, but I will also say that you know, when I speak with our Florida State guys, um, you know, uh, War Chance, one of the biggest uh, fan sites out there. I mean, those guys are those guys are really good at what they do, and, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any worry uh, coming from from Florida State's coaching staff. And, and when my conversations with Luke as well, uh, he's he's very much firmly committed. He just he kind of just committed to Florida State so early and never went and saw other schools. So. Uh, it is good for Penn State that they are the school that he seems to be visiting the most. So this was, I think, the first visit he took uh, to any school, uh, non, non-Florida State, uh, in 2023. I know that Benedictine, his school, has off this entire week. So what I'm trying to do is, one, get in touch with Luke to see if he wants to talk about this visit, but also try to figure out where else he's visiting because I, I don't believe that this was just a, a one-off visit for Luke. I, just from my previous conversation, he said he was going to take multiple visits uh, you know, when he, when he gets the opportunity this spring. So still working to see that. It's good that he keeps coming back. Uh, obviously, even if Penn State were to get another quarterback committed, they are going to continue pushing for Luke uh, in, until he's, he's either locked up or, or tells him, you know, not to bother anymore. But, uh, yeah, this is absolutely probably – I mean, this is definitely your just his top guy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Van Buren yeah. and Samaj Jones are also very much in the mix. But I think if Yurchich could get anybody, it'd be, it'd be Luke Cromano. Yeah, this is definitely a Mike Yersich quarterback if you're watching on YouTube. Like, wow, some of those throws, very similar to stuff you've seen from other guys that have committed to Penn State. Fitz, uh, just your your thoughts on the quarterback e- ecosystem for the Nittany Lions in 2024. I know it's not uh, been, I wouldn't say it's been the, the, the story of this class, but how do you think that uh, things are going in that area, you know, given what we saw this weekend? I think it's fine. I think it's an interesting balance because you'd like to bring in two if possible um, and figure out the numbers and go from there. Uh, as Ryan said, I think this is the Chrome and Hoke is it fits your such and what he likes to do. They've put a ton of manpower. Like James Franklin has been down there a couple of times. They watched him play basketball in January. They have made it clear to him that he is absolutely a priority target, but you've also got Van Buren. Samaj Jones was on campus. So like it, it'll be very interesting. And, and it, and it's, great to mock up a class and say that you'll get two of those you know two of those three guys or something like that but i don't i don't really see that happening like i don't see that as a scenario where like one will be fine with the other like van buren will be fine with chrome and hope being in there vice versa you know so like i think it'll be very interesting to see how they build that out um but i think i think they're fine michael van buren is going to announce in july i think penn state's standing in a strong spot right now um, you know, he's going to go back out to Oregon. Uh, the, the dominoes have started falling a little bit more frequently in the class of 2024. Um, Oklahoma got to commit Ohio state got Aaron Nolan. So you've got, got, you've got school, big schools that are on this level that, uh, you know, Penn state and up are filling up that, uh, you know, it's going to change some things for some quarterbacks along the way. Yeah. Uh, just a quick update to give a reference. The guys were talking about Michael Van Buren, 174 in the on 300, I'm sorry, in the industry ranking, a little, little lower in the on 300 ranking uh, you know we've talked about why th- here on the show before so you can check out previous shows to kind of get an idea why Lu- Luke Cromenhoek on three is much higher than the overall industry 59th player in the nation and the fifth quarterback overall in America so uh, Penn State trying to deal at the top of the deck when it comes to the quarterbacks uh, Fitz come back to you quickly any other guys that stand out to you from this weekend you want to discuss that you had something for us no, we've covered a lot. We've been on for okay. 37 minutes. There's uh, <laughs> quite, a guy, quite a few guys uh, mentioned so far, but uh, check cool. out the site for more. There's coming. Grant Bricks on campus this weekend, the offensive lineman from Iowa. Um, but Jake Warnara, uh, as we've mentioned on Friday, was going to be here. So uh, a little bit more on the site. So check it out. All right. So that'll bring us to our final segment of the show. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost skipped over a thing that I promised at the top of the show. And that is um, the idea that both of you guys have said this already. Penn State has started a run here when it comes to getting the recruits they want. John Mitchell um, and uh, Quentin Martin both uh, committing recently. They've got a solid foundation in this class. What is this run that you guys have been talking about? What does it look like to you, Ryan, when we talk about uh, getting players to commit? And, um, you know, could you ask for a better start than what they've had so far? They do this every year. 
uh, whether it's spring, whether it's June, whether it's both, they do it every year. So it, um, it depends on when you want to say it started, right? Did it start with Luke Reynolds, uh, you know, which isn't the flash year, the commitments with it being a three star to me, that's when that kind of gets rolling. Uh, but I think yeah, obviously you go back to back top 100 guys that, that grabs everyone's attention, of course, with Mitchell and, and Martin, but uh, I think the goal here is to definitely get another couple on, on board here by the end of April. You have a massive weekend coming up here in the blue white. Sean and I will, will, will preview everything there. We're working on those visitor list still uh, as of this morning. We'll preview that probably Friday, I assume. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I could see another two, three commitments. I, I think that would be realistic. I think you could realistically get five uh, in April. Um, but, you know, a lot of guys uh, coming on campus here that we're still trying to lock up. So I don't want to be like, so and so, so and so, and so and so, because we have five days to go, and I don't want to uh, run my mouth, and then guys don't show up like, like we did with Tice here the other week, of course. So uh, let's just see where that visitor list uh, stacks up later in the week. But Penn State absolutely uh, has a goal of getting a couple more guys on board, and I think they really would love for this class to be around ten or so uh, before you know going into official visits. Uh, Fitz, when it comes to a recruiting run, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and say like, okay. Because Quentin Martin committed, now these other guys, they feel comfortable committing. Uh, is it like that, or is it more about the work that's been put in already and, like, all of these like all of these things are blooming at the same time? It, it's more about finding the guys and when they're going to decide and when they're, like, ready to, as Quentin Martin was, just end it. Like, they're over it at this point. And uh, right now you're finding the guys that don't have to make it to official visits to differentiate the the you know, the, the change, the changes between each school that they're looking at. So like you're trying to find maybe, maybe pick off a, you know, I say, I say it with the blue white game, a couple linemen every year, you know, uh, cause, cause those guys are generally lower drama. Like they don't have to wait for the official visit. They've already been out. They've seen a bunch of schools and things like that. So I think that you have an opportunity to, to pick off some guys in that aspect. Of, but, but I think that that's what it comes down to. I mean, you're for, like, we, we tend to forget that it is a case by case basis for every single kid because it is, more than likely the first time that they're going through this and they are separated from, I mean, it's, this is, we, we talk about prospect, 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 but when you think about it, these prospects are spread out. They're not close to each other. Social media has made them like lumped into one another, but it's a case by case basis. So what you're trying to do, figure out which guys don't have to make it to summer, press a little bit harder in, the, in those areas and, and find positions where you can do that. Like find, like right now, Penn state has two linebackers. So you can maybe try and squeeze a guy at linebacker if you need to, or, typically happens in the offensive line where you fill up and you get three guys and you're trying to take five. And then all of a sudden, you know, two guys commit in the matter of days. So that's what you're trying to find is you're trying to find these sweet spots where you have different positions, different uh, guys from different backgrounds that, that can uh, jump in without having the pressure of having to wait to take three or four official visits in June. Well, there you go. That's kind of the parameters of what we're looking for. So keep one eyeball out on bluewhiteillustrated.com. And, of course, here on YouTube for any breaking news content where there's another commitment. We'll be back with all that stuff. So, as always, just another reminder, like this video and subscribe to Blue White Illustrated on YouTube so you don't miss anything. Because there's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of stuff. Including new commitments in, in, a, in a segment that's been, uh, I think... Uh, interesting at best. Let's get to about it. the future of Penn State. There's a lot of excitement. This is a really, really important day to a bunch of young men and their families. So Beyond Blessed is our segment where we are going to be giving you some names of players that got an offer to Penn State football recently, which also means that like we're still doing some work on them, and our experts here um, are st still gathering information. But I think it's not a fun expert segment. on any of these guys. Let me clarify. <laughs> there is no such thing as expert on any of these guys. It's interesting exactly. because we look like any each week saying, oh, yeah, this kid I've never watched before and just got an <laughs> offer three days ago. Go on. Sorry to that. Well, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly my point is that uh, I'm putting you guys on the spot with this, but I do think it's important that for Penn State fans to kind of see how all of this works and a progression of here are the guys getting offered. Um, I think this one sticks out to me, so I'll lead the segment. Um, you have Ben Roebuck committing to Michigan, and then all of a sudden, here's another six foot seven, 300 pound offensive lineman. Uh, uh, 
Phil Troutwine loves these big right tackles. Now, uh, Penn State sent out an offer this week to Bennett Warren, 2024 offensive tackle, 6'7", 330. I, I'm, I'm com- putting these two things together. They are not related. I just think it's interesting that you've got some super athletic offensive tackles that uh, Penn State has offered recently and that have made the top four. And then you've got these just mountain titan people that that phil troutwine gets in on at offensive line bennett warren is the latest one six seven three thirty from texas this feels fits you always talk about an offer to get him to campus this kind of feels like that for a guy that is a another uh highly uh valued player in america according to where he's ranked in the on 300 in the industry rankings is that is that a fair assessment of this situation yeah, you never know um, until you throw that offer out there. And, and you know, offers are non-binding. So what's Penn State offered, like 400 kids in the class of 2024 or something like that? It's 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 a it's, it's a mention of interest to try and pique some interest. So and I will say this, there's there's been studies and stuff about trying to find like the perfect offensive tackle body. Like, is he six, six, two? 50 or is he six, six or th- is he six, four, three, f- three, 40? I don't know. Um like nothing has come up in terms of consistency there. Like you can find tackles of all sizes and it's, it's more about the athleticism. It's more about the reach and things like that. You can find tackles of multiple sizes and be successful. I mean, Drew Shelton and Olu Fashanu, not the same prospect yeah. whatsoever. Um, so you're going to take your chances. It's not falling into one, Hey, I have to build them up or, Hey, I have to, 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 to strip them down and build them back up. It's, it's about finding, like I said, with receiver, it's finding the best player. It's not f- specifically finding the prototype or the quote unquote prototype. Yeah, uh, th- there's there's a couple different factors, obviously, that go into it. And, and if you have a combination of the skills necessary, you can play the position. So, you know, looking at Warren, I don't think he has the greatest feet in the world. He might not have the best bend, but he's got a huge reach, big frame. Those are tools that you want to at least consider. And I think you make a great point about Olu and uh, Drew Shelton, two very different body types that can both play the same position. Ryan, um, if you want to check out the rundown, tell me a couple of the other players here uh, that are uh, that got a recent Penn State offer. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll take the two twenty twenty four guys. It's it's the same mindset, right? Uh, two other twenty twenty four offers: Derek Plaz, offensive tackle out of Jacksonville, Florida, six six two sixty five. And then you have a wide receiver, uh, Lewey McCoy out of Miami Central, six foot one seventy. Um, you know, both I think both play or no, excuse me, Plaza is a three star prospect in the in the industry rating, and McCoy actually has a four star rating. Um, both are trying to get guys on campus, I and mean, that's really what this is all about. You know, I wouldn't be shocked too if if these are offers and you gotta get this offer out because Penn State's gonna go see them during the spring evaluation period. Certainly, guys, especially these linemen. I mean, Phil Trotman's gonna be incredibly busy during the uh, evaluation period to go see how these guys move, you know, that we, we see on the film, you see their size, get, you got the measurables, but actually seeing them up close and, and how they move will be a, a big part of, of trot wine taking what feels like 20 offensive tackles right now and, and getting it down to, to a handful of guys. So uh, what we'll see uh, with Plaz, I mean, quality offers, you know, he's got the, the Florida States, the Miamis of the world. Uh, we'll see. There's not a lot on his visits and, and where he's planning to go uh, as far as official visits right now. So uh, actually, he does have two. My fault. NC NC State and Miami. Uh, so let's see where that goes. Uh, and you know, Penn State can get him on campus. And then uh, McCoy is the one who just doesn't really seem to have much visits. Uh, he, he went to A and M and Florida State, and that's really been it. So that that to me that says this is a pretty wide open recruitment that might just still be getting started. And maybe Higgins is trying to get a in the, a foot in the door there. Uh, with the Miami wide receiver. A lot of new people here on the show today. So, Ryan, can you explain the spring visit period that you just described Mm -hmm. with Phil Troutwine? Uh, Just a little bit of background on what that means. Yeah, so from April 15th, um, pretty much through the end of May, uh, coaches are allowed to go out and watch players work out. Uh, So, uh, of course, all these schools all up and down the East Coast, uh, they'll have players lift at their, uh, you know, lift at their school after practice. And then, you know, a lot of guys do seven on seven. They'll do different drills. Coaches are just allowed to go and watch those. Uh, They're not allowed to uh, say, you know, player X, you know, go run this route and, um, you know, actually put guys through drills. That's what camps are for. Uh, But it is an opportunity for them to go out, watch what their coaches are doing with players and just kind of get a better feel for uh, how athletic they are. Or, you know, if you have a question about uh, how much a guy can bench or whatever it is, because you're allowed to watch them lift. So, you know, you can go in there and, and, and you know, kind of get some of those uh, 
measurable, verified. But it's it's mainly just an opportunity also to get out and see coaches. You know, a lot of it's just as as important as it is to see those players. Uh, it's just as important to go sit in uh, a coach's office for twenty minutes and you know just kind of get a better feel for for whomever the player is. So the 2025 guys here on uh, the roster for new offers, Jermichael Gills, Jordan Crawford, and Remington Moss. Gill, uh, Gillis is from St. Francis Academy, so another St. Francis player throwing another uh, throwing another coin in that pond. And then Crawford from Birmingham, Ala, Alabama, for, uh, Parker, uh, the high school. That I, I'm I'm I'm. I almost thought that, that that's where TJ Parker was from, but that is not correct. That's just uh, yeah. he's from Alabama. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, another another player high in the 20, uh, 2025 on 300. Um, so that's your week's list for uh, the new offers for Penn State football. Um, that does it for what I got. For what I got. Fitz, you got something. Luane McCoy, going back to 2024, very interesting because I was uh, Friday night, like late Friday night, I texted it to Ryan the kid tweeted out his offer and he had like at the time, like 30 some followers and like six of them were Penn state staffers. So Franklin that. Hagens, Calvin Lowry, uh, I think Rashad rich uh, cider, of course. Um, you know, so like a large percentage of his followers were Penn state and he was following them back. I, I just, I sent it to Ryan, like thinking it was like a 2026 kid. Cause this is how it worked. Like it was like his only tweet. He only had a, a handful of followers at that point. It's like, wow, this is a four-star or four-star industry kit. So, like, it's it was interesting to me that Penn State has, I don't want to say pushed that many chips in, but like, that's a really that's that's a strong effort for a guy that they just offered. Uh, he went to Orlando uh, Under Armour in March and was one of the stars there. Um, so, could just be a, a a a case of Penn State getting updated numbers or updated information on him. And, and he could be one of those guys on the ascent. And if you can get in early and I know he's got a very good offer list already. Um, if you can get in early and, and try and get him up for maybe a blue white game, maybe something in, in, in May or June, uh, something like that. You know, there's a lot of receivers running around the Miami area. A lot of athletic guys run around the Miami area. Yeah. Uh, Penn state has, has tended to, uh, to, to get some of those guys on campus kind of out of nowhere. So I'll be interested to see if Luane McCoy is one of those guys. Yeah, Penn State's done me, pretty well in Florida. Yeah, what's up? Uh, sorry, the only thing I was going to add to is Remington Moss, the 2025 safety. Out of all these guys, he's the one I actually do know a little bit about because he's been on campus three times. Uh, just six foot 175 out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, just came off a good visit to Notre Dame. I just, just want to know that he's been on campus three times now. Has a lot of interest in Penn State. So out of all these players that we're talking about right now, Remington Moss, he's a 2025 guy. So for next year's class, I could see him certainly being one of those safeties that we're talking about a good bit, good bit next year. So keep those names in mind. We'll keep uh, monitoring all of that at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Um, like I said before, all kinds of stuff is happening this week. We're going to be talking about, uh, you know, spring game and what's going on on the field. But uh, fits anything that you're looking forward to this weekend for blue white. Uh, and and where does it start with tailgating? What what time of the day does it start? <laughs> What, what time uh, my father will be out there as soon as you can be like I, I'm he gave me he gave me some ribs a couple weeks ago to put in the freezer to uh, to smoke. So I'm going to that's going to be my excuse to hang back for a little while. But uh, he's going to be out there at daybreak. I'm sure he just had his hip replaced and he's been looking forward to this for months. So like he is off the injured list and really pumped uh, to see it. Other than that, <laughs> I am looking forward to reading Ryan Snyder's notes on Blue White this week. Um, done a phenomenal job th with visitors and stuff this spring, and that has not slowed down a bit. Um, so check us out on the site at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Ryan, uh, yeah, what, are you looking uh, for what are you looking forward to? Should be recruits on campus every day this week. And I'm looking forward to next week when they're not. <laughs> not joking. <laughs> I mean, it just it's it's a it's a four or five week grind of just every day trying to track guys down. But um, no, nah, and there uh, we'll we'll have some notes here coming up here soon. There there is somebody on campus today. I'm going to post about here in a little bit. Uh, some some tomorrow should be one of the better lists uh, as far as just looking up and down the week. Really, really, what I should say is Friday and Saturday are the days. There will be you know a guy here and there popping up over the next couple of days, but. Uh, once we get to Friday, there's a good chunk of players coming for two day visits. You know that'll that'll stay for the blue white game the next day, and uh, we're we're working on that now, hoping to get that up here soon in the next I don't know 24 48 hours. Uh, other than that, did you uh, want? Uh, oh, I have an RPM. I was gonna to say, go do in. you want to tease? Do you want to tease that? No, I want people to subscribe and and, and read it there. There's the tease. <laughs> yeah, there, there there's a there's a new pick going in. Ryan's Nailed gonna be writing it. that up today. 
So bluewhiteillustrated.com, like I said, there's a thousand different reasons to subscribe. You've heard a bunch of them. We're going to get going, though, uh, because they've got to go do other things, including uh, taking care of children and puppies and uh, also doing their jobs. So I've taken up enough of their time. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who came in the chat today. This was an awesome show. We'll be back on Wednesday. And, of course, the Friday show previewing Blue White. That's going to be a good one. So subscribe to Blue White Illustrated on YouTube. We'll talk to you then.